Hey everybody, welcome to week three of Momtography 101. This week we're gonna be talking about background choice and lighting for those pictures. I know you guys have been learning a whole lot about manual mode and so this week I'm gonna give you some time to practice those things. When it comes to background choice and lighting, those are two things that are really gonna impact your final photos in a very visible way. And so I want us to talk about some important things to keep in mind when choosing a background or lighting situation for our photos. The first thing that I wanna cover is the importance of environment. So your environment is what is going on in your area at the time of your photo. This would be things to look for like cars going by, people that are in the way, or could be in your photos, fire hydrants, things in the general area that would be considered distracting. So take a look at your environment that you're planning on shooting in and see, ask yourself, is there anything here that I wouldn't want in my photos? If so, maybe choose a different environment to take your photos. Another thing to consider is background choice. See, your background choice is greatly gonna impact the style of picture that you're putting out. So if you're like me and you wanna shoot light and airy, background choice has a lot to do with that. So to get those light and airy photos, the key is having backgrounds that have a lot of light available. So if we were to go to a park, for instance, and naturally the first place that I would look before I had a trained eye was to shoot in front of bushes or in front of trees. For a light and airy photographer, that's really not a great background choice. Why? Not a lot of light can be seen through there, so your pictures are gonna look to have a dark background. Now that I know better, instead of shooting in an area that has bushes, I now opt to go for an open area where there's a lot of light in the background, so that when I snap my picture, the background is full of light and I can adjust my exposure and have that nice, bright, light, airy feel. If you're going for a more moody look, then those darker toned areas are perfect for you. Find those areas with the deep woods and the trees. Those are perfect for that style. So picking your background really has to do with your style. Now, if you don't know what style you like to shoot, I would say the easiest thing is to go for the light and airy simply because that's what I shoot. And so that's mainly what I'm gonna teach. Um, so if you're not really sure which to choose, Go for light and airy. The way that I like to shoot is focusing attention on my subject, not necessarily the background. A good question to ask if you have a, a good background choice is, is what's in the background or surrounding my subject adding to the photo or taking away attention from my subject? So if you purposely put your subject in front of a cool graffiti wall, that yes, that's a little bit distracting to the eye, but I think that it adds to the overall composition. But let's say that you're in an alleyway and there's a distracting trash can right there. That trash can doesn't really um, add to the photo. So I would move my subject over to crop that ugly trash can out of the picture. See, when it comes to picking a background, you can also pick something that's light in color. And so if you have the option between shooting in front of something that's dark versus shooting in front of maybe a white wall, always go for the white wall. See, what I absolutely love is one time I was shooting a wedding and there weren't very many like pretty spots outside to shoot. And so what did I do? I went and I found this wall. It was just plain white. And you know, from the outside you can say, oh, that's not very attractive. But I told my bride to trust me. We put the bride in front of this white wall with her bridal party. We snapped our pictures and man, it really made a difference. And it was so much better than shooting in front of this other area that just wasn't as pretty. That yes, it was just a plain white wall, but it allowed our subjects to really pop and I was able to capture the emotion of the moment and not have to be distracted by the background. The next thing that's really important to consider is the light that is hitting your subject. This is where it gets kind of tricky because the time of day that you shoot at really makes a difference. And so things that I like to avoid are harsh sunlight. This would be dead noon where the sun is right on top of your subject and it's really difficult to work with. The problem that comes when you shoot with harsh sunlight is that you have to play the game of shadows. This would be hiding from the shadows that are gonna cast awkward looks and awkward um, 
awkward shade onto your subject. When I shoot in sunlight, what I like to do is put the sun behind my subject. So when the sun is behind my subject, it's not casting weird shadows on their face. Now if the sun is in front of my subject, we then have to worry about that squinty eye look when they're you know, trying to be, not to be blinded by the sun and those really don't look great in pictures. And so by putting the sun behind your subject, you don't have to worry about that squinty eye look. It's difficult to put the sun behind your subject if the sun's right above them because automatically anything, it doesn't matter which way they turn, there's gonna be shadows cast on their face and it does not look good. In times like that, I look for what's called open shade. This would be a shaded area that has enough space for your subject to stand in. It's open shade. Now open shade would be things like a building, a tall building that's casting a large shaded area. That would be a good place to put your subject. A not so great place to put your subject looking for shade is under a tree. And here's why. Trees tend to cast what's called like spotty light. That's what I like to call it. And so this spotty light is when, you know, there's areas of shade, but areas uh, where the sun is coming through and there tends to be spots on your subject. You wanna try to avoid that spotty light. Now here's an example that we had from our group. Somebody in the Facebook group posted a picture of their daughter. Now they had positioned their daughter at a specific place outside of their house to avoid that sunlight. What they did was they put her against the brick wall. And what I told her was that that brick wall is a really dark area that didn't allow light to come in. And so their photo didn't look as light and airy. And so instead of putting her outside in the harsh sunlight, I suggested simply turning her so that her back was to the street where there's all of that light, yet her body was still in the shade. So turning your subject to face the shade where their, their, their face is in the shade, their body is in the shade, but there's open light behind them, that's how you get the best results. Now, if you wanna know the best time of day to shoot, that would be within two hours of sunrise and two hours of sunset. So if the sun sets at 7.30 where you are, you can figure that you're gonna have good lighting starting at about 5.30. From 5.30 until about seven is that golden hour that they talk about. That's that time where that light is perfectly diffused and it's just beautiful. You can put it behind them, you can put it in front of them. You don't have to worry about the sun casting those ugly shadows on your subject. Another great time to shoot is when it's cloudy. Now I know some people may say when it's cloudy, that's kind of ugly, but really clouds are a photographer's best friend. This is because that sunlight, that harsh light is being diffused by the clouds. The clouds are blocking off some of that harshness yet still allowing light to come through. And so on those cloudy days, you can go out whenever you want and you don't have to worry about shadows. That's an awesome time to go out and shoot. So this week, when you're going out to practice your manual mode, I want you to keep your eyes open because once you start to look at scenes like a photographer or a momtographer like you are, once you start to look at scenes differently, you're gonna choose your backgrounds differently. I want you to think with the end in mind. So think about what kind of outcome you want your photos to have and then choose your background for that outcome. Like I mentioned earlier, naturally, if I was at a park, I would head to bushes or a tree thinking, wow, that's a great background. But now that I know better, now that I know what I want my photos to look like, what kind of outcome I would like to see, I definitely look at the area differently. I look for places that allow lots of light to come through. Now it could be something as simple as moving your subject in, in a different angle because whenever you angle them differently, it's gonna have a slightly different background. So maybe there's an area you say, there's no open light coming through. Maybe try angling them slightly differently um, and turning you, yourself, following them with your camera and looking for different possibilities. This is really where the fun comes in because you as a photographer, like we're talking about this whole time, you have control over the outcome of your images. And so I'm excited to see this week because I'm confident that this lesson right here is gonna automatically make a big difference in your photos. So when you're posting your practice shots, make sure that the background choice is your focus this week. Look at a background that is light in color or allows light in. 
The more that you practice looking around for intentional backgrounds and intentional lighting, the easier that it will become. It will become really second nature um, to you the more that you work on it. And so I encourage you, my challenge to you this week is everywhere that you go, look around and ask yourself, would this make a good spot for pictures? Now, what I can say is sometimes locations can surprise you. There was one shoot in particular that I went a little bit out of my comfort zone and decided to shoot in an area that didn't automatically scream photo shoot, but I'm so glad that we did. So I took my client, her name was Katie, and we went to shoot on these stairs. So these stairs led below ground and they really looked dirty and kind of gross, but I wanted to try it just to see what we could come up with. So she was a dancer, so I posed her on the stairs and I started snapping some pictures after I had set my settings. Then whenever I looked at the pictures, I was so shocked because they were absolutely beautiful. I would have never thought that they would turn out so pretty. But the truth is they followed the rules. They were not distracting. It was a light background because the stairs were a light color and they were in open shade. And so there was no shadows or harsh sunlight that we had to worry about. So because it followed all of those rules, it turned out to be a really great spot. I encourage you to look for those spots that may not seem automatically like a great spot to shoot and see what you can come up with. Remember, make sure it follows those rules, that it's not a distracting environment, that the background is light and allows a lot of light in, maybe it's light color or um, it's an open space with a lot of light in the background, and then that there isn't harsh sunlight or odd shadows in the way distracting from the photo. So if it follows those rules, go for it. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with this week. Post your practice photos in the Facebook group. Um, there's a thread for CC, constructive criticism. I would love to see your practice shots um, and really just kind of show off a little bit. If you're nervous with how your photos are coming out, go ahead and post them and people from the group can encourage you and maybe give you some tips to try the next time that you're out. I'm so glad that we have this community here that we've built. Keep up the good work. Keep posting your practice shots, give each other encouragement, and I'm excited to see what we learned this week.